Hi, I'm back. So the other thing we were asked to make is how to make homemade slug traps. Um, there's quite a few different types of slug baits around. So if you've got slug baits at home, I thought I'd start by giving you a quick description of each of them. You've got things like your Blitzem and your McGregor slug bait, which is just a general slug bait. Um, it's made of chemicals, so it is poisonous to cats, dogs, animals, pets, wildlife, children. Um, so it needs to obviously be kept up high. There's a safe alternative for pets and wildlife called Quash, um, which is an iron-based uh, slug bait, which is really good that you can use. And then there's also one that's made by Yates that's called Basol. And Basol is one that tolerates the weather. So it lasts a lot longer than a general slug bait, especially as we're heading into like late autumn and winter. Um, and that will generally last about six weeks, even with rain. So those are your basic types of slug baits. So what happens when you're on lockdown and you've got no slug bait and the slugs are out trying to get into everything? Um, the best thing you can do, and actually this is what I do with the kids, is chuck on your gummies and you go out at night time um, once it's dark with a torch and get your torch out and shine around through the garden and that's actually how you'll see the most of them. Um, that's when they're out foraging, especially if you've got things like pea straw in the garden. They bring up the pea straw and then they start foraging around trying to eat at night. So going on a nighttime slug hunt is really good, um, but if you haven't got the squeamishness to be able to deal with that, the other thing you can do is make homemade slug traps. So what you're going to need for this is container, so bottles, um, bottoms of your, like, your milk bottles or your fizzy bottles. You can even use bowls um, or old containers and stuff that you don't want from the house. You need some sort of lid to go over the top of it um, because the biggest thing that stops it from working is rain getting inside of those containers. Um, so the best things to use for that, I use saucer container lids. Um, again, you could use another bowl over the top. Um, what else could you use? Oh, pots. Pots are another really good one to use as well to keep that water out as much as possible. And then I'm gonna show you two ways to do it today. So we're gonna either do it with beer um, if you can spare some beer and if you don't want to spare some beer the other way you can do it I'm going to show you a brew as well that you can make. Um, so the brew consists of mainly yeast and sugar that's what the slugs are attracted to um, and in case I forget to mention it later on you need to replace this um, either the beer or the brew that I'm going to show you how to make every three to four days because the slugs all get attracted to it and otherwise you're going to have a sloppy stinky gloppy mess so check it every couple of days replace the liquid if needed Otherwise, here we go. Right, and first we're gonna start by getting our containers dug into the ground. So I've got an old milk container and then an old fizzy bottle. Um, so start by digging your hole. You want it so the container's placed at soil level. Um, so we'll start with the round one. And then just firm the soil in around it. Let's try to keep as much soil out of it as possible. I might just tip that out and then place it back in again. That's nice and easy. And then I'll carry on with doing the milk container one just back here as well. Right, so I mentioned earlier that we've got two types of brew that we're going to be using. Um, so brew one is a beer and water mixture. If your beer is over 4%, then um, we mix 50% beer with 50% water. If it's a 2% beer or under, then you would mix it, just, you wouldn't mix it at all, you'd just do all beer. So I'm gonna pour that in one into there. You don't have to fill it up to the top, um, you just want enough that the slugs and snails will drown in it. Um, and as I said before, the main component that's actually attracting the slugs and snails is the yeast and the sugar. The other one that I've got here that I made up earlier, give it a good shake, is a brew that I made up. So this one is two cups of water, two teaspoons of sugar, two teaspoons of flour, and one teaspoon of yeast. Um, mix it all together, give it a really good shake. This one's obviously gonna last a little bit longer than just um, filling it up once. So again, fill that into your hole, and you are actually pretty much done with the mixtures. Now we just need to build a house to go on top of them. Right, so for the house, for the round one here, I've just cut up a couple of bamboo stakes. Not very consistently in size. <laughs> and I'm just gonna push one in either side. Now, this just has to be high enough to keep the water off. And so what I have is I've got a saucer left over from one of my little house plants, and we're just gonna put it on over top like that. If you really wanna be very clever and probably do it properly, push them down far up further, so they're just above the container. 
like so and that's going to make a way better seal from the rain so that's all that's going to be left looking from our trap and just make sure that soil's still up at the level of that there as well right for our back one I didn't really have anything that size so I've gone for an old plant pot from one of our tomatoes um, we may and good thing about the um, milk bottle container is it lets you sort of squish it into the right size so I'm just going to put two on there push that down a little bit more like so and there are homemade slug traps so again replace the We'll replace the mixture in it every two to three days. Come check it out. It'll be interesting to see how many we catch. Good luck.